episode five seems to me to be in a totally different register than <laughs> anything we've seen up until this point. Was it a very different experience for you in anticipating it and thinking it through and making it? Episodes four and five in the writing stage called for more invention than episodes one through three. Most of the time writing, we were thinking of a 58-page script to stay within the hour allotment. As it turned out, almost none of the episodes stayed within an hour allotment, and that's something that is really only possible on a network like HBO. But still, while writing, it forced as much economy and as much balancing of big events as possible. And so it put the discovery of Vita on the radio at the end of four, and then the Treviso discussion about Vita as the snake, snake. at the beginning of five. It's snake, it's bitch, it's coloratura. And me? I know enjoy a snake bite. The astonishing scene is, of course, the final scene at the mansion. Of course, the echoes of the snake conversation <laughs> at the beginning, and not only, I think, in her eyes for me, but also like in this tall body mm. as, as she gets up out of bed and walks to the dressing table. And it's almost like she's on point when she's sitting <laughs> in, the, in the chair. She right? is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? All forms of classical culture can yeah. collide. And she does literally slither. Yeah. across the room. In many ways, one of the most truly violent yeah. acts in the film and in the book and something we really yeah. wanted to preserve and that Evan bravely fulfilled for us was that parade across her mother stark naked. These moments of surprising deception, I guess, when Vita sings the rainbow song to Mildred, yeah. <laughs> you wonder which of the two concocted that little enticement. I mean, Monty or... Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. This one's just for you. Because at that moment, Monty hands her the, yeah. the opera glasses. Yeah. Yeah. She's in character, yeah. but she's also herself in some yeah. ways. And, and she's really seeing what a monster she really <laughs> is through this part that yeah. she's inhabiting yeah. maybe a little bit too easily. Of, yeah. of the makeup and the lights and the costume. And the tradition of the safer zone of watching your child from afar. And when you penetrate that distance, when she puts on those glasses and sees Vita up close, the illusion is broken, you know, and she has to return to that distance. Did you feel like in this episode five that, that the basic kind of 70s realist style that you would set up had exploded in some way? In some ways, yes, of course. There's still, and it's partly due to the challenge of pulling off what we had to pull off in the amount of time, because they weren't shot consecutively, they were all shot at the same time, was there still a tremendous amount of economy in the amount of shots in most of the scenes in the mansion. And even in the scene in the bedroom, it's still fairly simply shot. Basically, we hold to and continue a prolonged zooming out from Mildred when she sits down in shock. And I felt it needed it. We had an earlier cut where we stayed close on Mildred. And I felt you needed to see her framed by that door, literally cornered by this revelation. And similarly, the whole room is displayed as Vita walks across the aisle. It was sort of punctuated by these unsettling super close-ups of her lifting up the cigarette to her mouth and her eyes no. while she's still in bed. But for the most part, I would say no. I feel like that somewhat classical Gordon Willis-inspired mm -hmm. restraint was still operative. And then the film ends where it started with yeah. Mildred and Bert back in this tract house in Glendale. Exactly. Um, and her desperate, unimaginably resilient last wish to mend bridges with Vita yeah. when she appears in the end has a kind of final realization of Vita's motives. Go. And I think that was always a tough scene for me in terms of how calculated is this character. I think she's drawn even more so in the book. But ultimately, it's the fact that she could leave this place and move to New York and get physically separated from her mother. That's the driving force and the thing that ultimately breaks Mildred. The final scene with Bert is poignant and heartbreaking, but I think there's still doubts about how instantly or completely this preoccupation can end. To hell with her. To hell with her. That's what I want to hear.